Hi everyone. So welcome back. Yeah. Okay. So this will be the lesson number four. This will be lesson number four for your form four chemistry. Okay. So uh same thing. If today this is your first lesson with me, probably you will feel a bit blurred in the beginning, lah. Yeah, because you miss out the first three lessons. Yeah. So what you can do is that you can watch back the recording. Yeah, you can watch back the recording for the previous lesson, uh, which is lesson one to lesson three. Yeah. And if you have any, if you're having any problem after you're watching those recordings, uh, you can ask me anytime. Okay. All right. So without further ado, let's start with today's lesson. Uh. So today's lesson, we're gonna do okay, what we're gonna do today. So today we have two objectives. Uh. So we have two objectives for today's lesson. Uh. The first one, all right. So first of all, we want to do some question. Okay, we want we want to do some questions for cooling curve. Yeah. So last week we covered the theory of cooling curve, <clears throat> but we didn't do any questions on the cooling curve yet. So if you never do the question, you you might not really sure how to apply whatever theory that you have learned. Yeah. So that's why we will spend some time to do some question on cooling curve. Then only we will learn a new concept today. Lah. So the new concept that we will learn today is called atomic structure. Yeah. So this is our objective for today's lesson. Okay. All right. So without further ado, so let's start with this lesson. Huh? Okay. So let's do a quick revision. What we learned about cooling curve. Huh? All right. About five to 10 minute revision. Huh? Okay. So we learn about cooling curve and heating curve, right? Okay. So cooling curve. Okay. Cooling curve the, is a graph. This graph is temperature and time. Yeah. Heating and cooling curve, we have temperature and time in the graph. Yeah. So cooling curve, the graph is a staircase. Yeah. And then for cooling curve, the staircase is going down. Yeah. So you will see the staircase going down like this okay so sometimes they give you one staircase sometimes they give you two staircases so maximum there is only two staircases huh? if, if you will never ever get three staircases or more yeah all right so remember okay so the horizontal line this is where the change of state is happening so what do we mean by change of state Melting, boiling, freezing, condensation. Those are change of state. Blah. Okay, when you have two staircases, it's very easy. When you do a cooling process, when you cool down something, okay? So let's say you cool down a gas. So when the gas cooling down, condensation process will take place. After condensation, all the gases become liquid. When you continue to cool down the liquid, the liquid will freeze. So when you have two staircase, it's very easy. The first staircase is condensation. The second staircase is freezing. But when you only have one staircase, you all have to be very careful lah, because one staircase maybe is condensation, maybe it's freezing. So what should we do? We should read the question carefully in order to know what is our starting situation, what is our starting condition. Example, if they say you are given a liquid in the first place, so when the liquid you cool down, freezing. So let's say if they give you the gas in the first place, if the gas cool down, then it's condensation. So you all have to be very careful when there is only one staircase. Huh? Okay. All right. So last week, what we covered. Okay. So what if, let's say we do a cooling process. So let's say if I want to do freezing. Okay. So here. This is the part that freezing not started yet, right? F freezing happened at here. So at here, freezing not started here. Everything is liquid, yeah? So at here, the freezing started. And at here, the freezing ended. So during the whole freezing process, you have liquid and solid, okay? So at here, the liquid already complete the freezing process. All liquid already freeze. So here becomes solid. So remember, when you are on the horizontal line, you always have two states. When you are on the slanted line, you always have one state. I hope everyone know what is happening. And we also learn about how to, uh, we also learn an important thing. All right. So 
when we want to do a cooling process, okay, when we want to do a cooling process, there are two things we need to do. First of all, let's say I want to cool down a liquid. Huh? So if you want to cool down the this, this substance, there are two things you need to do. The first thing, go to put it in a conical flask or you can put it in a beaker. You can put in conical flask. You also can put in a beaker. Number two, you always need to take the thermometer and catch out. You need to stir the whole thing. Why? Why you want to stir the whole thing and why you need to put in the conical flask? Okay? Because you want to ensure that you have a uniform cooling process. Okay? If the uni if the cooling process is not uniform, then it will it will actually have a special process will take place. Okay, what, what will take place, everyone? Let me know in the chat box. If the cooling process is not uniform, what will happen? We learned this in the last lesson. Let me know in the chat box what will happen. Okay, very good. Super cooling process. Understand? We don't want super cooling process. Huh? So super cooling process means the cooling process happened too rapidly, too fast. You don't want. You want the cooling process to be slow and steady. Same thing. Heating process, we also want the heating process to be slow and steady. Yeah? All right? So it's called super cooling, uh, super cooling process, uh, not super freezing. Uh, no such thing called super freezing one. Uh, okay. So now I told you all previously in the last lesson, which one more important? If today you want to avoid super cooling and they only ask you to choose one best answer. Okay. So we know use the conical flask and beaker. Okay. Can help us in the super cooling to, 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 to help us avoid the super cooling. Why? Conical flask and beaker can block the wind, isn't it? When you can block the wind, you can actually uh, minimize, okay? You can minimize or reduce the super cooling process, yeah? Another one is that you need to take the thermometer to stir, to stir the liquid, okay? You need to take the thermometer to stir the liquid, okay? So I told you all last week, I told you in the last lesson, if they ask us to choose one best method, which one is the best? One and two, which one is better? Which one is the best? Stir, huh? all right, get it? All right, so if they really, really want you to choose the best method only, you only write stir. But if they never ask you to choose, write both. If they never ask you to choose, write both. Okay, if let's say the question only asks, the question asks, Martin, how to avoid super cooling? So my answer, all right, use conical flask, okay, and stir the liquid. I'll write both answer if the question never forced me to choose. Ah, but if let's say the question is objective question, they give us a few answer and they give you these two answer, you only can choose one. Then you must know these two methods, both are good. Both can avoid super cooling. But which one is the best? Sir? So that's why you have to be careful. Huh? Sometimes when you see the question, God, two correct answers sometimes when you see that the question got two correct answers then your job is not choosing the correct answer already now your job should be choosing the best answer yeah so all these things i cover in the last lesson isn't it okay in the last lesson i also tell you what happened from one process to another process let's do a quick five minute revision then we continue to do exercises it's okay all right come so last week, we also learned what happened during the cooling process. Huh? So let's say, initially, this is my cooling curve. Okay. So let's see what happened here to here and here to here. Okay. Let's say uh, this is process A to B. This is process B to C. C to D. Uh. Okay. Let's say this is a freezing process. Okay. So we want to know what is happening from A to B and what is happening from B to C. So let's look at A to B first. So from A to B, what happened? Okay, what happened now? Okay, when you cool down the substance, remember, cooling curve, you always, always cooling down the substance. When you cool down the substance, what happened? The substance will lose some energy, okay? All right, what are the substance here, everyone? Before the freezing takes place, everything is liquid, yeah? So you have liquid. So let's draw some liquid first. So this is liquid. 
So when you cool down the liquid, what happened? The liquid need to throw away energy. Uh. Cooling process, throw energy away. Heating process, absorb the energy going in. Yeah. So when you cool down the substance, the substance lose energy. What is the what is the name of the energy you lose? Okay. This energy called kinetic energy. So not okay. The energy of particle called kinetic energy. So you can write like this. Okay. So in the process A to B, what happened? A to B, you will see that okay, all the particle they actually lose or they release heat. Yeah. So when they release the heat, when they throw away some energy to surrounding, their kinetic energy will decreases as well. They will have less and less energy. Make sense, ma? Initially, I got 40 joule. Now, I throw 20 joule to the surrounding. I left 20 joule. My energy become lesser because I release my energy already. When kinetic energy decreases, temperature will decrease as well because I told you all many times, kinetic energy and temperature, these two are twins. They are twins. They do the same thing. Whatever kinetic energy do, temperature will follow and do the same thing. Yeah, all right. I hope you all still remember this. Yeah, okay. But more, what, what is more important is here, B to C. So B to C, this is super, super popular in SPM. That's why I want to show you. One, two, three, four, five. Not five star, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten star. So they always, always ask this question. Right? They always, always ask this question. Why temperature didn't change Yeah, during the freezing process? Why the temperature didn't change? Or why the temperature is constant? Yeah, They, they always ask, why temperature remain constant? Okay, Why temperature remains constant Okay, during the freezing process? Okay. This is super, super popular in SPM. I'll prove to you and I'll show you some question in a short while. Huh? But let's us do this revision first. Okay, why? Huh? During freezing, what happened, guys? Freezing. Freezing, we want to convert liquid to solid. So when you want to convert liquid to solid, what happened? You want some liquid like this, okay, sticking together so that they could form the solid. Yeah, this is what we want to achieve. So what happened is this, okay? So what happened is that why the temperature didn't change at all? The reason is this. For liquid, when you do the cooling process of the liquid, the liquid loses energy. I throw away some energy to the surrounding, yeah? This energy you throw to surrounding, we call it heat loss. You can write L-O-S-T. You can write L-O-S-S. -S. It doesn't matter, okay? Heat loss to the surrounding. So you throw away some energy to surrounding, okay? Why when you throw away energy to surrounding, the temperatures didn't change? Because when you want to do freezing, liquid, they want to stick together. They want to join together. So you can imagine like this, huh? This fella is a liquid. This fella is a liquid. They need to hold their hand, join together, so that they become solid. You see that? Join together, right? They're sticking together, okay? So when something join together, they will get extra energy. So I want you to understand this concept. When you join with other people, you will get additional energy. You will get additional energy when you sticking or join with other people. So that's what happened here. So now, all these liquid, they need to hold their hand, join together, you know, from solid. So when they join together here, they will release extra energy. So the energy they get here, same as the energy they throw away. Example, initially, this fella got 10 joule. Just now, when you do cooling process, you throw 3 joule to surrounding. But now when you sticking with another liquid to form solid, when you join with other liquid, when the liquid holding hand together, they got back 3 joule. So 3 joule throw away, get back 3 joule. You still have 10 joule. Your energy didn't change. Is it okay? All right? So how to put in words? So heat loss to the surrounding. Heat loss to the surrounding. It's balanced by 
Balanced by what? Balanced by heat release. Okay. Heat release is here. This one. Heat release. So be careful. This is heat loss. This is heat release. Why there is heat release? Why you got extra energy here? Because you have, you shaking hand with other people. You stick together. Stick together called formation of attractive force. You can say attractive force or you can say force of attraction. Okay? So hope everyone can understand this. Huh? So that's the reason. The heat that you throw to the surrounding balance. Balance means same. Same with the energy you got back when the liquid, they sticking together to form solid. This sticking together called formation of attractive force. And this process of sticking together will give extra energy. This energy they give you called heat release. Okay? So that's it. So we do a very quick revision here, okay? Which I think is necessary like, because if we never do revision, we keep moving on. No point, like, no point, okay? Let me know in the chat box, guys. Is it okay? How's everything after the revision? Are you okay? Do you still remember what we covered in the past lesson? Okay, so my logic quite easy, huh? If you've forgotten already, revise back. Just revise back as easy as that. You can watch a recording what? Same thing. If you are new students and this is your first lesson, for sure you might feel a bit blur. For sure you might feel a bit blur, which is normal. Yeah. So don't feel bad. Okay. You will be able to catch up with us very, very, very soon. Yeah. You what? But what you need to do is that you really need to spend some time to watch the recording from previous lesson so that you can understand what you missed out previously. Yeah. Okay. So now for the next probably 20, 20 to 30 minutes, we will try to do some exercises. Huh? Okay, okay, let's do some exercises for cooling curve. You see, there are many, many questions for cooling curve, which I want to do together with you so that you know exactly how the cooling curve question can be tested in the real SPM examination paper. Yeah, let's start. Okay, we will do two objective questions and then a lot of subjective questions. Huh? So let's look at this. This is a Joho paper. This is an uh, objective question. This is one objective question from Joho, uh, 2021. Diagrams, diagram number six show you the cooling curve for liquid X. So when you're given a liquid and you do the cooling process, when you cool down a liquid, what will happen? Freezing, isn't it? So you know already, this process is freezing, okay? So which of the following statement is correct? Which one is true? First one, they say T1 to T2, they are liquid and solid. T1 to T2, you have liquid and solid. Yes or no? Let's see. Yeah? Freezing. T1 to T2, it's here, isn't it? So this is the freezing process ongoing, isn't it? So the freezing process is ongoing. When freezing process is ongoing, you have liquid and some liquid already become solid, isn't it? So you have some liquid not yet become solid. You have some liquid already become solid. So you have liquid and solid. So the answer A is absolutely correct. Huh? The answer A is absolutely correct. Okay, now why the answer cannot be B, C, or donkey? Let's look at B. Attractive force is overcome at T2. T2, attractive force is overcome. What do you mean that overcome? Overcome means they want to do cutting, right? Do you want to cut something? No. At T2 here, what happened? This is freezing started. This is freezing ended. Freezing, what you want to do? Freezing, you want to use, you want to take the liquid and join together. You want to join together, not cut them apart. So join together, you shouldn't use the word overcome. You should use the word form. You form the attraction force. That's why answer B is wrong. Answer C, all the particles vibrating at T1 only. T1. So at T1, T1 is on the horizontal line. So on the horizontal line, this is where the freezing is ongoing. When freezing is ongoing, you have liquid and solid. So the liquid, they can move freely. The solid can vibrate, isn't it? So by right, you should have, you should able to vibrate and move freely because at T1, you have liquid and solid. Uh, so the liquid can move. The solid can vibrate. So by right, you should have both. But they only say vibrate, which is wrong. So the then the answer donkey say what? 
the freezing point is y degree celsius no freezing freezing happen at this line this line what is the temperature everyone come to here x the temperature should be x not the y okay guys let me know in the chat box are you okay why the answer is a and more importantly why b c donkey is wrong are you okay with this question so guys you see uh, you learn more when you not only know the right answer you learn more when you can even understand why other answers are wrong you you will understand the whole concept even better okay if you do it that way lah. that's why you see in this case although i know the answer is a but why i still need to waste the time to, to show you b c and donkey because i really hope that you can understand the whole concept lah. all right next one this is a question from Kada. this is a question from Kada paper in the year 2021 so as you can see this is a cooling curve so they say this diagram is a cooling curve of liquid same thing you know already you given a liquid in the first place when you cool down the liquid you expect this process should be freezing isn't it true not you are given a liquid in the first place and you are you are cooling down the liquid so when you cool down the liquid this process it is a freezing process yeah all right so now which of the following statement is correct okay answer a saying that all the particle in liquid form in t1 to t2 let's look at t1 to t2 uh. t1 to t2 where is it here in the middle no way lah. because we learned before when you are on horizontal line how many states we have everyone i told you before when you are on horizontal line how many states you have let me know in the chat box everyone two very good huh? guys remember when you are on the horizontal line which means the change of state is happening is ongoing so you always have two states for example solid plus liquid liquid plus gas you always have two states but, but what's going wrong here what's going wrong here the answer here only give us one state lah. only liquid cannot lah. all right from t2 to t3 from t2 to t3 the particle arranged in a pack but not orderly manner okay what do you mean by pack but not orderly manner okay so what do, what do you mean by pack but not orderly manner eh? all right so let's look at it okay pack but not orderly manner actually they are referring to liquid they are referring to liquid you see eh? all right one minute revision solid everything squeezed together so we call this as pack pack means squeeze together and you can see everything very organized we call it pack and orderly that is for solid okay when you have liquid what is the arrangement here got a few here got a few okay guys do they squeeze together yes they still squeeze together okay so but do they squeeze as much as this no ma this one you have so many things squeezed together this one you still have something squeezed together but not as terrible as this so it's less pack all right and then is it orderly yes you still can see some sequence but not the sequence not as nice as solid lah. solid you see very nice one liquid here got some something here got something we call it less orderly that is for liquid ah. okay for gas what is the expected arrangement here got something here got something here got something so you can see gas they are very far away from each other we call it far apart and gas don't have a specific pattern right or not gas one here one here one here one here you cannot see any pattern when you cannot see any pattern you cannot use the word orderly you have to use the word random okay so this is the comparison between solid liquid and gas i hope you know huh? okay come let's look let's look at this question answer b they say what from t2 to d3 particle is packed but not in orderly let's look at t2 to d3 first t2 to d3 what you have okay this process is freezing so here before freezing everything is liquid here freezing already finished ma. this is after freezing ma. after freezing everything is solid so when everything already becomes solid 
what is the arrangement? When everything becomes solid, you should be squeezed together, packed, and you should be very, very orderly. True or not? You should be packed and orderly. They say packed, good, but they say not in orderly, wrong. So answer B is off. Is it okay? Because by right, solid should be packed, solid should be orderly. Okay, let's look at answer C. Heat is released to the surrounding at T1 to T2 so that the liquid attract one and other to form the solid. Okay, so do you form solid from T1 to T2? I think yes. Huh? T1 to T2, freezing process is ongoing. When freezing process is ongoing, so you convert to solid. You form solid. Is it liquid and liquid attracted? To one other it means liquid and liquid shake their hand, join together to form solid, isn't it? This is liquid, this is liquid, they join together so that you form your solid. So the answer C is absolutely correct. Okay, okay, guys, let me know in the chat box are you okay why the answer is C for this question? Are you guys okay with it? Okay, so we're done. Huh? Okay, we are done with the objective question. So let's spend some time together in subjective question before we go on and learn a new theory today. Huh? Okay, subjective question, uh, we will do a few questions together. Okay, let's start with the first one. Okay, this question is coming from 2023 Terengganu trial exam paper. Huh? Soalan percubaan. Huh? Soalan percubaan Terengganu. Okay. Tahun 2023. Okay. So it's a trial exam paper. So trial exam paper, uh, I consider it as a good quality paper lah because the way they ask the questions really, really follow a proper format. That's what I told you all the other day. I, I think I told you all since the first lesson. Uh, don't waste too much time to do reference book exercises. Don't waste too much time to do textbook exercises. Not to say they are bad. Not to say they are terrible but they are not very helpful because reference book and textbook exercises can be too easy, okay? So better you want to do, do some good quality one. Okay, the first one. Okay, so as you all can see, this is a cooling curve, right? Or not? How you know this is cooling curve? Staircase going down. Remember, staircase going down is a cooling curve. Staircase going up is a heating curve, huh? So obviously, this is a cooling curve. Lah. Obviously, this is a cooling curve. Lah. Okay, how on earth we know this cooling curve? This cooling curve got how many staircase, ladies and gentlemen? One. Eh? So when you only have one staircase, maybe it represents freezing. Maybe it represents condensation. How we know this cooling curve is a freezing or condensation? Let's read the question carefully. Lah. Okay, so... Diagram 1 show the graph of temperature times against the cooling of acetamide. So they only say acetamide. They didn't tell you the acetamide is a liquid or is a gas. They didn't tell you. No worry. Let's continue first. Okay. You see here? What is the freezing point of acetamide? You know already. Freezing point. So you are very sure that this process is freezing. Yeah. So that's what I told you all the other day. When you have only one staircase, you have to be very careful. You have to read the question to figure out what is the process. Okay, All right now, what is the particle in acetamide? One minute revision. Huh? In chemistry, when they say the word particle, maybe it's atom, maybe it's molecule, maybe it's ion, right? Okay, so atom is somebody who come alone, don't have any friend. Molecule is the combination of non-metal and non-metal. Uh. Non-metal, non-metal join together, it's molecule. Ion is metal plus non-metal. Or metal is so oh, sorry, or ion is somebody that got charged. When you got charged, or when you have metal and non-metal join together, then you are ion. Yeah. Okay, come. Let's try to look at this question. Uh. What is the particle for acetamide? How to know acetamide is atom, molecule, or ion? So let's look at the question. Do they give us the formula for acetamide? Yes. Acetamide, the formula is given here, this guy. So CH3CONH2. Okay. CH3, CH3, CONH2. All right. Okay. 
So now, uh, okay, hold on. Huh? Uh, Wei Xuan, you say you cannot find the question. What do you mean by find this question? What do you mean? What do you mean by you cannot find this question? <clears throat> oh, the material, Wei Xuan, I think this will be, this is your first lesson with me, I think. Yeah, all right. Uh, the material will be given after the lesson. Yeah, after the class, then only I give you this material because I need to write something here. So that's why I'll provide all these things after the class. Is it okay? Okay. Okay, so guys, let's continue. Huh? All right, so you can see this whole thing. Yeah, this whole thing here. All right. How to know you are atom, how to know you are molecule, or how to know that you are Ion, huh? how are we going to know that? So let's check. Huh? So this sub substance is made by carbon. Carbon is a non-metal. Hydrogen, also a non-metal. Carbon, non-metal. Oxygen, also a non-metal. Nitrogen, non-metal. Hydrogen, non-metal. So when you have many, many non-metal, they join together. Yeah, when you have many, many non-metal, they join together. You should know that this is a molecule. Yeah? This is a molecule, all right? So very easy, lah. So this one, it is a molecule, all right? What is the freezing point of acetamide? acetamide? Okay, so freezing point, how to find? So let's look at here. Freezing point, freezing process happen at here. What is the temperature for your freezing? Here, 80, okay? 80, yeah, all right? Okay, Uh, I get a question here. Jaya, Jaya is asking, these two carbon cannot combine. Can. It's just a way of writing only. They can write like this. One, two, two carbon. Then, this hydrogen, they combine here. Become three plus two. Become five. Then, the N and O. No problem. One. It's just a way of writing. one. It's just a way of writing only. Yeah, you want to separate two carbon like this, or you want to mix these two carbon, become C2. It's perfectly fine. It is just a way of writing. It doesn't matter. one. It doesn't matter. one. Okay? All right. Uh, so, okay. Can we write HOH? Not advisable. Not advisable. HOH. Better you write H2O. You don't write HOH. You will learn this type of special writing in your Form 5. In your Form 5, Chapter 2. Then only you learn this special way of writing. Yeah? Okay. So, for now, don't focus on this. Huh? For now, you just, you know, okay. Metal, no metal. That's the thing. Yeah? All right. Uh, so, now. So, Freezing point is here, 80. Yeah? So if you write 80, no marks. Huh? Why? Because you didn't put the unit. So always, always remember you need to put the, you need to put the unit. Huh? So the unit should be degrees Celsius. So it is 80 degrees Celsius. Huh? It is 80 degrees Celsius. Okay. So that's it. All right. So now we move on to another one. What is the state of matter at KL? So state, when you see the word state means solid, liquid, gas. Okay. When you see the word states, which means solid, liquid, and gas. Yeah. All right. So how are we going to do it? KL. KL is here. This is freezing process. Here, freezing process not happening yet. So when you not yet freeze, you are liquid. Not true not. When you not freeze yet. So you should be a liquid. All right. So next one. Why the temperature remain constant at LM? Why the temperature remain constant means no change. Lah. LM. LM is here. So LM, this is where the freezing ongoing, right? The freezing is happening. So we learned just now. Why during the freezing process, the temperature didn't change? So remember, freezing, what happened? Liquid and liquid. They throw away some energy to surrounding. So, but at the same time, liquid, they join together to form a solid. So, when they join together, they get extra energy from here. So, when you join together, this joining gives back energy to us. Okay? So, now you can see. All right? The particle throw some energy to surrounding but you get back some energy afterward so the total energy of particle didn't change when the particle didn't change the energy the temperature won't change 
So this is the very popular question I told you all. I hope you all understand how to answer that. You see, heat loss to the surrounding is balanced by the heat release during formation of attractive force. Okay, why you want to form attractive force? Because you want to form solid, isn't it? Freezing, you want the liquid and liquid holding their hand together. You want the liquid to stick together to form solid. So I really hope you understand the whole thing rather than memorizing answer. Huh? Because many, many students, they are damn good with memorizing answer. They keep memorizing answer only, but they not even understand what they write. A lot of students, they, you know, they get a good score. They get a very good mark, but they not even know what they're writing but they, they just memorize the answer only. Um, I hope you are not the one. Okay, I really, really hope you are not the one. Okay, because I don't know. Lah. I just I just feel that it's not the right way. Lah. It's not the right way because if you go by memorizing answer, you don't understand the concept at all. Once the question change a little bit, you cannot do already. You cannot do already because you get used to memorize the answer for this type of question. Lah. So when the question, they twist and turn a bit. They make the question a little bit k but you cannot do already. Yeah, that's what I really hope you guys can understand what is happening. Yeah, All right. So this question is super, super popular. They always ask you why temperature didn't change during the freezing process. Okay, so I hope everyone okay with the first question. The first question, if you can do total mark here is five. Huh? You will be able to score five marks. If you're able to do this whole question, okay, which is from Taranganu year 2023. Okay, let me know in the chat box, guys. Are you okay with the first question? Are you okay with this first question? Uh, what about the rest? That is not replying. Are you guys okay? Okay, so let's move on. Huh? All right. So the next question, this is from 2023 Joho. Huh? This is another trial exam paper from Joho. Uh, year 2023 okay so let's see how to do this question let, let us have a look how to do this question okay so this diagram show a temperature against time for the cooling uh, of naphthalene so you know uh, it's a cooling curve uh, staircase going down so this is a cooling curve so based on the picture what do we mean by freezing point so they, they they love to ask what is freezing point melting point boiling point condensation point so remember, all these points, they are a temperature. Huh? Freezing point is not a point. Freezing point is a constant temperature. Okay, freezing point is a constant temperature. And what happened during this constant temperature? Freezing, you will change liquid to solid. Okay, which liquid change to solid? And remember, when you mention freezing point, boiling point, melting point, you not only need to mention the temperature, you must also mention the pressure because pressure also affecting your freezing point, melting point, boiling point. So when you do freezing, the pressure you cannot touch out. You must fix the pressure. We call it at specific pressure. Okay? So this is not hard, but the fact is that a lot of students cannot get full mark at all. Huh? A lot of students, they cannot get full mark because some students, they only write, okay? Liquid change to solid, that's it. That is what a lot of students will write, okay? And many students forgot to put specific pressure. Some students, they didn't write temperature, they write point. Freezing point is a point where liquid change to solid, all are wrong, all are wrong. So this is a very, very easy question, but not many students can score full mark. Why? A lot of careless mistake here and there. A lot of careless mistake here and there. That's so why you have to be very, very careful. Huh? Okay, the small, small detail, you really, really need to be very careful with it. Huh? If you don't watch out the details, you will lose the mark. Okay, so next one. What is the freezing point for naphthalene? So naphthalene, 
what is your freezing point? So freezing freezing happened at here. Freezing point is the temperature at here, Y2. So Y2 is the temperature. And remember, what is the unit for temperature? Degree Celsius. Huh? So don't forget. Don't forget that you need to put in the temperature. Because sorry, don't forget you need to put in the unit. Huh? If you don't put the unit, then they will deduct the mark. Huh? They will deduct the mark. Huh? So uh, you, you all have to be very careful. Please remember that you have to put the unit. Huh? So T2 degree Celsius. Why the temperature from L to M, they didn't change? Same thing. Lah. Why temperature didn't change? So we know that temperature didn't change from L to M. L to M is freezing. So I say just now, during freezing, what happened? During freezing, the liquid lose some energy to the surrounding. Okay? But at the same time, the liquid joined together to form solid. When they joined together, they got back some extra energy here. So the energy they throw to the surrounding, same as the energy they get back when they join together. Yeah? So that's it. So this is the answer, right? The heat loss to the surrounding is balanced by the heat release during formation of attraction force. Okay? That's it. Oh, sorry, just now I wrote wrongly. This is not T2. Uh. This is Y2. Sorry, my bad. My bad. Uh. Should be Y2. Sorry, my bad. Yeah. So I wrote wrongly just now. It's Y2. Okay. All right. Y2, uh, not T2. My bad. Yeah. All right. So heat release, okay, is balanced by the heat. So heat loss. Uh, so you have to be very careful with the words. Uh, okay. Now you see, for example, okay, one answer from the chat box. Uh, Hui Xian. Hui Xian, both answer you write heat release cannot. Cannot, uh, Hui Xian. So it's, that's, why, that's why you have to be very careful here, guys. You see, huh? this is the liquid. This is the liquid. The energy you throw to the surrounding, you have to write heat loss. Don't write heat release. They won't give you the mark one. Heat loss. And this heat loss, this heat you throw to where? Heat loss to the surrounding. Okay? The heat loss to the surrounding. Okay? The energy you throw away is called heat loss to the surrounding. So this heat loss of surrounding is the same as the energy you get back during this thing joined together. When this thing joined together, you will get back extra energy. This energy you get back is called heat release. Okay? During formation of attractive force. So why you want to form attractive force? Okay? So because freezing, we want the liquid to join together in order to form solid, okay? So this energy you throw away is actually the same as the energy you get back. So heat loss to the surrounding is balanced by heat release during formation of attractive force to form solid. That's it, yeah? So use the right word. Huh? If here, this heat loss, you go to write heat release, no mark at all. So that's why you must able to choose the right keyword to be used. They are very, very strict. They are very, very particular on this. Huh? So please be careful, yeah? Okay, next one. The state of particle from M to N is solid. So draw the arrangement. So this is quite easy, right? You learned previously how to, learn, how to draw solid. So remember, when we draw solid in SPM, it's different from how you draw solid in your form 1, form 2, or form 3. Huh? In your SPM, Everything is more strict now. Everything is more and more strict. So if you want to draw solid in SPM, first of all, you must draw minimum three times three. So minimum, I want to see three row, minimum three column, minimum, okay? So more than that is okay. After that, the whole box must be fully occupied. You don't want to have any empty spaces. Huh? You don't want any empty spaces when you draw the solid. Like for example, you cannot draw like this. Okay, you draw this. Oh, very nice. Okay, but here got empty spaces. Cannot. They still don't give you the mark. Okay, <laughs> so <clears throat> not hard, but you all have to be careful. Okay, so this is roughly how the solid will look alike, lah. Yeah. So this will be the second question. So this question, the full mark is four marks, ah. Huh? Right. I hope you understand how it works. Okay. So if you really know how to do this question, you are able to score four marks in the Johor uh, a trial exam paper. Yeah, you'll be able to, to get four marks in the Johor 
trial exam paper year 2023. Yeah. Okay. So now we have another two more to go. Then we finish with this already. Yeah. Okay. Next one. All right. <clears throat> this is another Joho question, but this is the early one. Just now the question is Joho 2023. This question is coming from Joho 2021. Okay. So let's look at this picture. So they say that, okay, you have acetamide. You want to do the cooling process. Eh? So what do we mean by freezing point? Same thing, no? Freezing point is a constant temperature in which liquid change to solid at specific pressure. Eh? So don't forget, you need to write the pressure. Eh? Don't forget, you need to write the pressure. Okay? So it's the constant temperature in which the liquid change to solid at specific pressure. Okay? So next one, what is the freezing point for acetamide in this experiment? So we know freezing always happens on the horizontal line. This horizontal line, the temperature, it is 80, isn't it? This horizontal line, the temperature is 80. So 80, don't forget, you need to put the unit degree Celsius. What is the particle for acetamide? Again, particle always come with three things only, atoms, molecule, or ion huh? when you when they ask about particles it's always about atom molecule or ion so let's look at acetamide acetamide this is the formula given here so acetamide you have carbon which is non-metal acetamide has hydrogen which is also non-metal nitrogen non-metal oxygen also non-metal so when all of them are non-metal they join together non-metal non-metal join together you will get Molecule, yeah, molecule. All right, same thing. Why there is no change in temperature from point Q to point R? Same thing from point Q to point R. What is this again? So, we just now the question say that this is freezing point. So, obviously, this question is freezing, right? Obviously, this question is freezing. Same thing. Why during the freezing process? Uh, why? during the freezing process why when freezing process is happening the temperature didn't change so like what we say just now okay so liquid they want to join together to form solid so when you do the cooling process liquid throw the energy to the surrounding okay the and the energy you throw to surrounding is called heat loss okay heat loss to the surrounding yeah so the energy you throw to surrounding, this is one. Then after that, when the liquid want to form solid, they want to join together. When they join together, joining together give back extra energy. Okay, when you when the liquid jo join together, they get extra energy. This energy you got it's heat release. Okay, heat release. Okay. So this heat release, why you have extra energy here? You have extra energy when liquid join together to form solid. Okay. So liquid join together to form solid. How to write it? Heat release when okay, <clears throat> the uh when the formation of attractive force. Okay, when you have formation of attractive force, when the liquid join together. Okay, why the liquid want to join together? You want to form solid. And you want to tell people. The heat that you throw away to surrounding is exactly the same as the energy you got back. Like 3 joule here, you get back 3 joule here. So they are the same. Same, you use the word balance. Okay, it's balanced by. So this is the whole thing. Yeah, I really, really hope you all know this. Huh? Because I'm not sure whether you realize or not. Do you notice that almost all the questions that we discussed they always ask why the temperature didn't change. Do you aware that? Let me know in the chat box. Yes or no? Do you aware that? Do you aware that we discussed three questions just now and all the three questions is asking this? Okay? You got it? So, a simple thing. So, this question keep asking all and all over again. And if you really don't go and master it, it's totally wasted. Lah. You got it? It's something like this, you know. It's something like, Okay, you already know a leak question. They already tell you the question what they will ask. And you not even want to study that topic. 
So it's totally wasted, ma. They even tell you what they were asked already. So you see, based on the example that we covered, you can see this question came out three times there. We do three questions, and these questions ask three times there. All questions they ask. Uh. So if you don't go to master this, it's very, very wasted. Lah. Okay? I really hope you all can understand this. Huh? Okay, finish. Okay, let's do the last question. Then we move on to new concept today. Huh? Okay, so this is the last question that we will discuss for cooling curve. Huh? So everyone look at the picture here. So you can see what happened here. This is a normal cooling curve. So this cooling curve got one hole. Why got one hole cooling too fast? So this one is super cooling. Huh? This is the normal cooling process. And this one is super cooling process. Yeah. All right. So the question gives us two marks. And then the question is asking, tell me one significant difference between two graph and explain why. So you need to tell me the difference. Tell me this graph, what is different? Okay. You cannot say super cooling. They, because they didn't ask you what is happening. And they asked that here, you see, what is the phenomenon? What is the phenomenon occur at R? And then only this one, you can write super cooling. Uh, when they ask you what is happening, then only you can write super cooling. At here, did they ask you what is happening? No, they didn't ask you what is happening. So you cannot go to write super cooling. So what you can do, very easy, just look at the graph here. So what you can see here, this one temperature go down nice and steady, slowly. This one temperature go pick too fast, like roller coaster. You see temperature go down too fast. That's why I got one hole, see, too fast. So the first point you all can write is this, okay? In the diagram 6.2a, 6.2a is this one. Left-hand side diagram, huh? this is 6.2b. In the diagram 6.2a, temperature drop uniformly. Make sense, ma? Temperature drop nicely, like this. And here, and here. In diagram 6.2b, what do you see? Temperature drop drastically. See, temperature drop too fast. Got one hole. Okay, got satu lubang. Huh? Cannot. So, drop drastically. So, that's the difference. Okay, so this is what you see. Then, only you explain why. Huh? Why, why temperature drop uniformly? In diagram 6.2a, the cooling process is uniform. You have a uniform cooling process. That's why temperature go down steady. So in 6.2b, why there is a sharp decreasing in the temperature? The cooling process is not uniform. Simple thing. Don't make your life so hard. Don't make the answer so complicated. Just explain using the graph. What you see from the graph. For one part, you can see the first graph, the temperature go down slow and steady. Second one, temperature go down very, very deep. You see, this one go down a bit only. This one, temperature go down a lot. Okay? So this one drop uniformly. This one drop drastically. Why? Why temperature drop so much? Don't use the word super cooling here to explain because super cooling is here. Okay? So you, you just need a tip to explain simply why temperature drop so fast because the cooling process is uneven. Okay? Or we call not uniform. Why this one temperature drops so steady? Because the cooling process is uniform. Okay? I hope I hope you guys can understand this thing. All right? How to overcome the condition in C1? C1 is super cooling. How to solve super cooling process? Okay? So how to solve super cooling process? Stir the liquid. Okay? And if you only say stir, no mark, huh? a lot of students will write this only. Oh, Mr. Martin say, to avoid super cooling, write stir. No mark. You want to, what, what you want to stir? What you want to stir? You didn't say what you want to stir. Okay? So you must tell people what you want to stir. You want to stir the naphthalene. Okay? You want to stir the naphthalene. And you stir liquid naphthalene. Why is liquid? Because you know this is a freezing process. Huh? So you stir the liquid naphthalene. How you stir? Stir continuously. You don't like this, you know. You don't like all. Oh, I just go to stir. Okay, this is the naphthalene. This is thermometer. Uh, I stir for two seconds. I stop. I don't want lazy already. Okay, lazy already. Yeah. So this one no. Okay. So stir only like this. So cannot stir two seconds lah. You need to continuously stir the whole thing during the whole cooling process. Ah, 
continue stir, 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 stir until the whole thing finish. Okay. So how you stir using thermometer. So why you want to stir to ensure you have a uniform cooling effect. Yeah. All right. Do we need to mention the conical flask? Uh, normally no need because why? Because I say between stir and also uh, conical flask, which is the better one? Stir is the better one. And some more is only one mark. So one mark, I just say stir will do. If they give me two mark, then probably here I add another one more. All right. So use conical or put this. Okay. Or I'll write this. Put this thing we call boiling cube into a conical flask or into a beaker. For me, I will only write this answer if it's two marks. Nah. But since in this case, the question only one mark, I will write the best answer for the, for the, to avoid super cooling. The best way to avoid super cooling is stir. So remember, ah, you must stir. And you need to tell people what you are stirring. You stir the naphthalene. And how you stir? Stir continuously. You don't stir for two minutes, then stop already. Cannot. Let's say the cooling process is uh, 10 minutes. You need to continuously stir for the entire 10 minutes. Let's say the cooling process is 25 minutes. You need to stir for 25 minutes. Understand? So you need to stir continuously. How you stir? Not using finger, not using spoon. Use the thermometer. Okay? Uh, so you, your answer must be detailed, you know. If you only write the word stir, no mark. If you only write the word stir the liquid, no mark. Okay, so the answer need to be complete. Stir the liquid naphthalene, stir it continuously. How to stir it? By using thermometer. Okay, simple as that. All right, if you don't want to write to ensure uniform cooling effect, it's okay. You still get full mark. This one, if you don't write, it's okay. All right, so guys, let me know in the chat box. Are you okay with this question for super cooling? Are you okay with this particular question? Okay, so we are done with this. Huh? So now we are all done with the cooling curve. Okay, so now we will go on and learn something new. Huh? Okay, we will go on and learn something new for today's lesson. Huh? So let's go back to our notes. Okay, so today I will tell you something about the atomic structure. Okay, today we will learn something about atomic structure. Huh? Okay, what is atomic structure all about? What is atomic structure all about? Okay. So previously, we only learned this, particles. We learned that there are three particles, yeah, isn't it? We learned particles called atom, which come alone. We learned that particle is molecule, which is non-metal and non-metal joined together. We learned that the particle might be ion, which carry some charge, isn't it? That's what we learned back in the day, yeah? So now, what we want to learn now, we want to go further. So now we want to zoom in. This atom, inside the atom, what we have. What we have inside the atom. So this is what we want to learn today. Yeah. So first of all, we need to understand there are total five scientists. Uh, there are total five scientists which they make contribution. Uh, they contribute to the development of atomic structure theory. So these five scientists, they work very hard to tell us what we have inside the atom, okay? So I'll spend about 10 minutes to tell you the whole story first for these five scientists. Then I'll teach you how to memorize what they say, yeah? All right, so let's start with this, huh? okay? So the first guy is this, huh? the first scientist, the name is called John Dalton. The first scientist, the name is called John Dalton. So what John Dalton tell us? John Dalton tell us, Atom is a hard sphere. Uh, so John Dalton tells us atom is sphere. Sphere is what, guys? Sphere means ball, right? Sphere is ball shape. So John Dalton says atom is a ball, and it's very, very hard. That's it, okay? 
Is it important? Yes. Because before John Dalton tell us, no people know how atom looks alike. Maybe some people were taught atom is a triangle. Maybe some people thought atom is a cube. Maybe some people thought atom is a cylinder. No people know that, right? So John Dalton tell us, oh, atom is in a ball shape and it is very, very hard. So that's what John Dalton tell us. The second scientist that we need to know, the second scientist that we need to know is called J.J. Uh, Thompson. Okay, it's called J.J. Thompson, huh? All right, J.J. Thompson. So what J.J. Thompson tell us? So J.J. Thompson tell us more about the ball because now John Dalton only say there's a ball, but we have no idea what we have inside the ball. Okay, so John Dalton tell us two things. John Dalton tell us two things. Number one, John Dalton say that this ball, the surface, uh, surface, the surface of the ball, like your skin, uh, your skin is your surface, uh, the surface of the ball is positively charged. So John Dalton found that okay, the surface of the sphere is positively charged. And John Dalton also found some alien inside the ball. John Dalton found that hey, inside the ball, there are something hidden. He found electron inside the ball. Ah, so previously we don't we never know inside atom got electron. We never know. But JJ Thompson discovered that. So JJ Thompson found that there are electrons inside the ball. So JJ Thompson also discovered electron. Okay. Inside the atom. Okay. And then he also tell us the electron is negatively charged. Uh, so now we know really inside the atom you have some small, small thing called electron, and then the electron is negatively charged. So you see, inside the ball, you have electron, the electron is negatively charged. So this is what J.J. Thompson tells us. No worry, later I teach you how to memorize. Huh? No worry, for now, just listen to my story. Let me finish the whole thing first. Huh? Okay, so this is the first scientist. This is the second scientist. Huh? Okay, we have five. So let's move on to the third scientist. Uh. So the third scientist, the third scientist is called Ernest. Uh. It's called Ernest Rutherford. Uh. The name is called Ernest Rutherford. So what Ernest Rutherford tell us? Ernest Rutherford tell us, okay, there is a ball, all right? So inside the ball got, inside the ball got electron, okay? Inside the ball, okay, got electron, yep. Inside the ball here got electron, which is true. And then the electron is negatively charged, which is true. Okay. So Ernest Rutherford proposed one very important concept. You see, yeah, previously JJ Thompson said the positive charge is scatter around. Okay, what do we mean by scatter? Scatter means here and there. The positive charge is like those naughty kids running here and there. Yeah. The positive charge is here and there, is on the surface. But Ernest Rutherford say no, the positive charge is not on the surface. The positive charge is all in the middle part of the atom. This middle part of the atom is called nucleus. Ah, so that's the difference already, yeah? isn't it? J.J. Thompson say positive charge is on the surface. But Ernest Rutherford say no, the positive charge is not on the surface. The positive charge is in the middle of the atom, which is called nucleus. And J.J. Thompson also explained to us why there is positive charge, where the positive charge coming from. You see, huh? J.J. Thompson only tell us we have positive charge on the surface. But J.J. Thompson didn't tell us where does the positive char charge coming from. Who give us the positive charge? J.J. Thompson didn't explain. So Ernest Rutherford found that all oh, the positive charge actually coming from another particle, which is called proton. So Ernest Rutherford discover proton. So he found that inside the atom, you have proton. Okay, this proton is in the nucleus. Where is nucleus, everyone? Nucleus is the middle, the middle part of your atom. So this is atom. 
the middle part of the atom is called nucleus. Okay, so he discovered proton. Okay, and then proton is positively charged. Okay, so now if I try to simplify the whole thing, it will look like this. This is an atom. Atom in the middle got nucleus in the middle, which is called nucleus. Okay, this nucleus inside got proton, and this proton is giving us positive charge. Outside the nucleus, you have some electron, and this electron gives us negative charge. This is what we know from Rutherford. Okay, so now we are now we already covered three scientists. Okay, guys, let me know in the chat box. Are you okay with the first three scientists? John Dalton, JJ Thompson, and Ernest Rutherford. Are you okay with the first three scientists so far? Okay, we do it step by step. Huh? Okay, just take it as a story. Just take it as a story. Try to understand the whole thing first. Okay, later I'll teach you how to memorize and I'll show you how the question can be tested in exam. I'll do that for you later. No worry. Huh? For now, just listen to the story. Try to imagine what is happening. That is good enough. All right. So let's go for the fourth guy. The fourth guy. Huh? Okay, scientist number four. Scientist number four, the name is called Niels Bohr. Niels Bohr. Okay, Niels Bohr, what he said, what Niels Bohr said to us. So Niels Bohr said that this electron inside, they are moving. Okay, this electron is moving. And the electron not simply, simply move at all. Okay, okay. Niels Bohr said that this electron inside here, it's moving. Okay. And then the electron not simply move on, not like this electron, not like say, oh, today come here, tomorrow come here, the day after tomorrow here, then come here again, come here, come here, come here, come here, come here. Cannot know. The electron move in a special way. So the electron moving just like this. You can imagine like this, huh? this is your earth. And then this is your moon. Okay, this is the moon, okay? moon so how the moon moving everyone moon is moving circulating the earth right the moon is moving circulating the earth and moon got their own pathway this pathway in in uh in uh what we call that uh in science is called orbit yeah so the moon is moving in orbit so now we will use the same idea here in chemistry so now the electron is just like the moon. The electron that we got, just like the moon. So the electron is moving in their own orbit. This orbit is called S-H-E-L-L, -L, shell. So the electron is moving in the shell. Okay, and then the shell, we draw like ellipse. You see, the shape look like ellipse. Okay, like this. Huh? And do you only have one shell? No, you have more than one shell, for example. This is another shell. And this shell also got electron moving inside there. Okay? So this is what Niels Bohr found. So Niels Bohr found that electron is moving. And not simply, simply move here and there. Electron is moving in the shell. Huh? Electron move in their own orbits. Can we, Mr. Martin, can we use the word orbits? Cannot. Okay, you must use the word shell. Eh? The electron is moved in their own shell. Okay, now let's go for the last guy. Last scientist already. Scientist number five, which is the last one already. Scientist number five, the name is called James. Okay, James Chadwick. So James Chadwick, what he do? He, ag he actually agree with whatever thing Niels Bohr say. Whatever thing Niels Bohr say, James Chadwick agree. James Chadwick only found that in the middle of the atom. Okay, guys, let me know in the chat box, what is the name for the middle part of atom? Atom, the middle part, what's the name again? What's the what's the name of the middle part of the atom? Nucleus, ah. Huh? Nucleus, okay? Nucleus, all right? Very good. So, Previously, we know inside the nucleus got proton, right? So James Chadwick found that 
inside the nucleus, in the middle, in the middle of atom, we not only have nucleus, we not only have nucleus, you also have another one more fella, which is called neutron. So James Chadwick discovered, he found neutron inside the nucleus. Uh, so now we know already, inside the nucleus, we have neutron and proton. And neutron is neutral, okay? Which is neutral. So neutron don't have any charges. Okay, so he found that in the middle here, got some neutron. Okay, so now can we summarize everything together? Let's do it quickly, yeah? Okay, first guy, John Dalton say atom is a ball. So J.J. Thompson say in the ball, you have electron and it's negatively charged. The surface of the ball is positively charged. That's what J.J. Thompson said. Then Niels Bohr. Niels Bohr say that this positive charge is not here and there. All the positive charge is in the middle. This middle part called nucleus. And the positive charge is coming from proton. Eh? Proton is the reason why we got positive charge. Okay, that's it. So the electron still there. Lah. The electron still there. Yeah. So after that, Niels Bohr. So Niels Bohr say that the electron, they are not stay there and do nothing. Why? The electron is moving in their own shell. Okay, the electron is actually moving in their own shell. Last one, James Chavik. James Chavik found that inside the nucleus, you not only have proton, you also have neutron. That's it. So that's the whole story for five scientists. Huh? That's what the five scientists told us. Okay, so now moment of truth. Okay, some students can memorize this whole thing easily. Yes, but a lot of students couldn't. A lot of students couldn't memorize. They say, sir, I know there are a few scientists. Lah. I know. I know they, <coughs> I know they say something. <laughs> okay, and I know they say something. But I cannot remember the name of the scientist. I cannot remember the the what they say. All right. So guys, if you are one of them, if you cannot remember the name of the scientist or you cannot remember the what they say, maybe you can type number one in the chat box. You let me know first. If let's say you found that okay, I understand the theory. I know there are five scientists, but sometimes I forgot what's the name and what they propose or what is the concept they say. All right. So guys, now how to do it. Okay, so that's the simple way. So we try to use a simpler way to memorize. Huh? So let us try to memorize something using a special sentence. Okay. We can create a sentence like this. Huh? Okay. So the sentence will sound like this. Okay. Don't. Don't throw. Okay. You don't go and throw. Throw what? Don't throw rubbish. Okay. Don't throw rubbish. Okay, don't throw rubbish below the carpet. Don't do that. Don't throw the rubbish below carpet. It's dirty. It's unethical. Okay. So why you don't throw the rubbish below the carpet? Because when you don't throw the rubbish, you save the earth. Wow. You save the earth and then you protect our mother nature. You got it? So let's make it a story. Don't throw rubbish below carpet. Save earth. Protect mother nature so what should you do you cut in the middle the the one on the left hand side here is the scientist the one on the right hand side is what they propose or what is their theory what they say lah. okay so how to do it look at the first letter huruf pertama ah. look at the first letter d t r b c okay so D is Dalton. Okay. T is Thompson. R is Rutherford. B is Ball. C is Chewick. Okay. Because this part normally they ask you in objective one. So it, as long as you know part of the name is okay one. Because normally it's very easy one. Okay. For example, they ask you all oh, who proposed this. Then you know or oh, Dalton. That's it. You don't even need to memorize the full name, you know. The full name is called John Dalton, J.J. Thompson, Ernest Rutherford, Niels Bohr, 
James Chadwick. You not even need to know the full name, you know, because the question very straightforward one. The question they won't ask like this. They won't ask, okay, which of the following discovered electron? Answer A, J.J. Thompson. Answer B, C.C. Thompson. Answer D, W.W. W. Thompson. They won't ask that one. Clear. No worry on that. Same thing. They won't ask who discovered an uh, atom. Answer A, John Dalton. Answer B, Martin Dalton. Answer C, Felicia Dalton. They won't ask that one. Is it okay? So whenever the answer got Dalton, you know it's the, it's, it's the answer already. Is it okay? So on the left-hand side, the first letter here is the scientist. Okay, come to the right-hand side. Right-hand side, also look at the first letter. S-E-P-M-N. So the right-hand side, the letter here, this letter tell us what they propose, what they say. Lah. So John Dalton discovered S. S means sphere. John Dalton say atom is a sphere. It's a ball. So Thompson discovered E. E means electron. J.J. Thompson found electron. Rutherford found P. P is proton. Yeah? Next one. Niels Bohr. Niels Bohr discovered M. M means moving. Electron is moving. Where they move? Moving in the shell. Yeah? James Chadwick discovered N. N is neutron. Okay? So this is one of the way that maybe can help you to memorize, yeah? So this will be maybe a bit helpful for those who have a weak or poor memorizing skill. You can use this thing, yeah? One of the simplest way I always tell my students is that if you are a person who are very, very weak in memorizing, try to do this. If you are a person who are very weak in memorizing, try to do this. Take a piece of paper, copy it. That's it. Copy this thing. Copy this thing. Do it once a day. Do it one time in a day. And it won't take you a long time. Huh? Don't say, don't complain, say no time. Huh? Sir, I got no time to copy. Bro, copy this thing won't take you one hour. Yeah. Taking this thing won't, won't take you one hour. Huh? Take, to, copy this thing at most take you five minutes. That's it. So spend five minutes a day. Copy this. And you didn't need to copy this for your whole life. You know, you copy this continuously for two weeks. That's it. Two weeks. So after two weeks, huh? This whole thing magically, magically will just go into your brain. That's all. This whole thing will just magically go into your brain. Simple as that. Yeah? Because when you copy, 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 uh, this is something we call it, okay? Uh, uh, we call it a subconscious memorizing. Okay, what do we mean by subconscious memorizing? Have, do, do you guys have this experience? Let's say, if anyone of you here love K-pop, for example, you love K-pop, all right? But you couldn't read, you can, you couldn't read, you couldn't write the Korean language. You don't know how to how to read in Korean. You don't know how to read, how to write in Korean. But somehow you can sing the Korean song one. Why are you so smart one? Why? Or do you purposely go to learn Korean? No, you didn't, all right? But how come you can sing the Korean song? Because when you love the music, when you love the artist, Sometimes when you listen to the to the to the music, you sing along, isn't it? You sing along la 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 la. Sooner or later, you know how to sing already, isn't it? So do you try to force yourself to memorize all the lyrics? No, you didn't. But somehow it just stick with you already. It's the same thing here. When you copy this thing, copy, copy, copy for a few times, the whole thing will just naturally go into your mind, go into your brain. Simple as that. Yeah. So if you are a person who are very, very weak in memorizing, this is a method that you can use. It's, but again, although this method is powerful, but trust me, out of 10 people, 9 people, they won't do it. One Because why? It sounds stupid. It sounds stupid. Wow, I need to copy this thing. Like very stupid one. Okay? But if you really try this, give yourself 2 weeks time, really copy it, confirm. Confirm you were able to memorize. Confirm. I say three times. Yeah. All right. So I hope uh, okay, everyone know how to do this. Okay, guys, let me know in the chat box. Okay. How's everything? Are you guys okay with what the five scientists say and what they uh, uh what, what are the five scientists and what they say? And also a simpler way to memorize it. Are you okay with this whole thing so far? All right. So remember, don't throw rubbish below carpet. Save earth, protect mother nature. Okay. 
So that is a way. That is a way that you really, really can, you know, uh, what we call that can can help you lah to memorize this whole thing. Okay. Okay. So simple as that. Okay. Because you need to find a way, one. You need to find a way. Because once you find a way, the memorizing part would be a little bit easy, lah. Okay. You will make it a little bit easy, one. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay, all right. So now let's move on. Eh? Okay, so let's try to do some question related to this. Lah. Okay, you see, this is what the scientists found. And then this is how we memorize it. Lah. Okay, so now let us try to do a few questions uh, uh, related. Okay, so let's do it. Here we go. Okay, where's the question? Somewhere here. Yep. Okay. All right. Let's try this. Which of the following is correct? Which of the following is correct? Huh? Okay. So let's try this question. This question comes from police. Huh? Police year 2021. A trial exam paper. Okay. Which one is correct? Okay. So don't throw rubbish below carpet. Save earth. Protect mother nature. Okay, Rutherford, Rutherford R, Rutherford found P, found proton, isn't it? All right, so JJ Thompson, T, Thompson discovered E, electron. So the best answer is B, is it okay? Next one, Chadwick C, Chadwick found N, neutron, is it okay? John Dalton D, Dalton found S, sphere. So that is how it works. Huh? So the best answer goes to B. I hope everyone okay with it. I hope everyone okay with this. Let's go on. Who discovered electron in the in the atomic model? This is Nagari Sabilan paper. So who discovered electron, everyone? Let me know in the chat box. Come on. Let me know in the chat box, guys. Who found electron? Who found electron? JJ Thompson. Yeah. JJ Thompson. Huh? So same thing. Don't throw rubbish below carpet. Save Earth. Protect Mother Nature. Electron. E. Who found electron? T. Thompson. You see that? If you know how to use this acronym, don't throw rubbish below carpet. Save Earth. Protect Mother Nature. You can do very, very fast one. Okay, next one. You let me know. Who discovered proton? Who discovered proton, everyone? Who found proton? Ah? Who found proton? Okay, Thompson is T H O M S O N by right, but sometimes they write T H O M P. It doesn't, doesn't matter, you see? Should be T O T H O M, I see? T H O M S O N. This one should they have P one. Fair. Yeah. Okay, so who found the proton rather for? Is it okay? How to do it? Proton P. P is proton found by R. R is rather for. See that? When you're able to use this thing, you'll be very, very powerful. Okay, now I want to I want you all to try this question. Huh? This question is very, very interesting. This one, you try this. This is for Joho. You try this question and let me know the answer. Who proposed this picture? One? Who proposed this picture? Who proposed this picture? Okay, news board is N E I L S uh, news board. Okay. So who proposed this picture? Okay. 
Okay, so should be Rutherford. Uh. Okay, why? Huh? Okay, so because when you see P, P stand for proton, is it? Don't throw rubbish below carpet. Save Earth, protect Mother Nature. Proton is covered by Rutherford. Okay, here maybe, maybe some student make a mistake. They saw, eh, this E is electron or this arrow seems like electron is moving, isn't it? Seems like electron is moving. Sir, electron moving. I thought is news ball. All right. Any one of you thought the answer is A1? Let me know in the chat box. You type, you type, you type me. Any one of you thought the answer is A1? You type me in the chat box. Anyone? Okay. So why the answer cannot be news ball? Easy. Because news ball say electron is moving, but not moving here and there. How the electron move? Okay, according to Niels Bohr, electron should move in shell. Do you see the shell here? No. Shell, they will draw like this. Ellipse, ellipse, ellipse. They didn't draw the shell. So the electron is not moving in the shell. So that's why you don't think, oh, when electron is moving, confirm it's Niels Bohr. No. Niels Bohr say electron is moving, but not moving here and there. Electron need to move in their own shell. That's why A is not possible. Are you okay, Manpai? Are you okay why it's not news for? Are you okay? Can I? All right. So that's why be careful, you know. That's why you see they're so bad, no? They're so bad. They put news for as the first answer. So maybe some of you thought the answer is news for. You circle answer A happily and you won't check other answer really. Maybe. Yeah? That's why you have to be careful, huh? News for say electron move in their own shell. They didn't draw the shell here. Okay, come, let's move on. Okay, all right. So here, the next thing. This is the picture. They say that, uh, what is the position of proton? Where do we find proton? So proton is in the middle of the, the atom, which is called nucleus. Huh? All right. At, okay, inside the nucleus, you have your proton and your neutron. Is okay? Remember, huh? nucleus, not nuclear, not nucleon. So please be very careful. Huh? Okay, next one. Huh? All right. So next one, let's settle this whole thing. All right. This is SPM real examination question. SPM real past year question in the year of 2021. Huh? Which model was proposed by Rutherford? All right. Don't throw rubbish below carpet. Save of protect mother nature. Rather for R. Discover P proton. So proton. This one no proton. This one got proton. This one got proton. This one got proton and neutron. Cannot lah. Alright. So the answer must be B or donkey. How to choose among B or donkey? You see? This one you have proton and electron only. So the this one for answer C. That is proton and electron. Can you see this different circle? This circle like what? Different orbit, right? Different orbit, the shell. So who proposed the shell? Niels Bohr. Niels Bohr discovered that. Niels Bohr saying the electron move in there, move in this circle, the shell. So cannot lah. So the best answer is B. Okay? All right. I hope you all can understand this. Come, let's finish the, the rest thing. Which of the following is Proposed by Dalton. So Dalton say atom cannot be divided into a simpler particle. All right. Yes. Why? Eh? Because John Dalton say atom is a hard sphere. So atom is so hard that you cannot cut it anymore. So cannot be divided. Yeah. Cannot be divided. All right. So the answer is A. All right. Simple as that. Okay. So next one. Which subatomic particle was discovered by Ernest Rutherford? All right, Ernest Rutherford. Okay, I get a question in the chat box. Do I need to memorize the structure? Yes, you all need to know how to draw. Huh? You all need to know how to draw also. Actually, quite easy lah, to draw the picture. Okay, you need to know how to draw as well. Huh? Okay, all right. So, which subatomic particle was discovered by Rutherford? So, you guys have to be careful, huh, guys. Okay, so. Particle means atom, molecule, and ion. What is subatomic particle? Subatomic particle means something inside the atom. So inside atom, you have proton, neutron, and electron, isn't it? 
So who found the who 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 what 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 Rutherford found proton? Okay, Rutherford found proton. Ah, huh? okay. Don't throw rubbish below carpet. Save earth. Protect mother nature. Rutherford found P. P is proton. Yeah. So now that's it. All right. So here we go. Let's finish the rest. Lah. Okay. So we have three. We have three more to go. Okay. So the statement show that this is somebody who mentioned. So this fellow, blah, 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 very long. Okay. Very long paragraph. But we, we find keywords only. The keyword is neutron. Okay. Neutron. Huh? So who discovered neutron? Chadwick. James Chadwick. Isn't it? Same thing. Who discovered neutron? Same guy. James Chadwick. Yeah. Next one. Joho. What are the subatomic particles in the nucleus? So remember, atom inside got nucleus. In the nucleus got proton and neutron. Where is electron? Electron is outside the nucleus and moving in the shell. Is it okay? So inside the nucleus, we have proton as well as neutron. Finish. Okay. So I hope, guys, you can see these questions are very straightforward, isn't it? These questions are very, very straightforward. Yeah. So I hope you guys can see how it works. Overall, I don't think it's hard. Yeah? Overall, I not even think it is hard. Yeah. Finish already. Okay. So now let's go back and finishing with our lesson. We still left a little bit more to go today. Okay. So let's go for this thing. Huh? Okay. All right. So. All right. So now we need to know how to draw modern atomic model. Okay. What is modern atomic model? Modern atomic model means that after you combine all the knowledge from the five scientists just now, after you combine all the five concepts from the scientists, we combine all of them and then we come up with a latest. Modern means latest, latest version. Okay. So how you draw the latest version of the atom? So you draw like this, huh? Okay, let's say you draw this, okay? In the atom, this is atom. And we know inside the atom, you have proton, neutron, electron, isn't it? Okay. So this proton, neutron, electron, how to draw it? So we draw it like this, okay? So in the atom, you have a nucleus. Okay, you have a nucleus. So nucleus inside got proton. In nucleus inside got neutron, isn't it? All right. And then where is electron? Electron is outside the nucleus and electron is moving in the shell. Previously, news ball, draw the shell like this. You see, news ball, draw the shell like this, ellipse. But it's very hard to draw, isn't it? Draw ellipse uh, is very hard to draw one. That's why how we draw the shell nowadays, we draw using circle. You see, uh? this is shell number one. This is shell number two. This is shell number three. Yeah, You not only have one shell, uh, okay? you can have more than one orbit. One. You can have more than one shell. Okay, How many shell we should draw? We will learn this in the next lesson. Now, for now, I just want you to know, all these circle is shell. This shell is where the electron they are moving. Is it okay? Okay, one more. How we draw electron? Previously, we draw electron using an E, right? Now, we don't do it. Now, the in the modern, in the modern atomic model, the electron, you can use two symbols to represent. See? In the modern atomic structure, your electron, you can use a dot to draw it or a cross to draw it. Example, I want to show people inside here got two electrons. You can put one dot, two dot, or you can put one crosses, two crosses. So we, we use a dot or a crosses to represent the electron. Huh? So, so don't draw E anymore. Don't do that. Because when we draw the modern atomic structure, the latest version, the new version, you don't use the E to show the electron already. Electron now you use a dot or a cross. So same thing, let's say the second shell, I have a few electrons, maybe I can draw like this. Next week, I will show you how to put in the electron in the right way, okay? But for now, I just want you to know this picture, is okay? So inside the atom, there is a nucleus. In the nucleus, we have proton and neutron. 
So electron is outside the nucleus and moving in their own cell. That's it. Okay, if you don't want to draw like this, another way to draw is this. Uh. Another way, some book, they do this. Uh. Some of the book, the nucleus, they go to color it. They shake the whole thing. If you shake the whole thing, uh, that's a problem. Okay, if you shake the whole thing, okay, so you cannot see proton and neutron inside. Really or not. If you if you do the coloring for the whole thing, can, then you need to put an arrow. You must tell people this whole black black thing in the middle is nucleus. And inside the nucleus, you have proton. Inside the nucleus, you have neutron. So that's it. All right. So you can you have two ways to draw. So whether the nucleus you want to do shading, shading means color it. So if you color it, you must put another extra arrow to tell people this color thing is nucleus, and in the nucleus you have color, you have proton and neutron. If you don't want to color it, you do like this. Directly make it empty, no need to color. So when it's empty inside, you can show people the proton and neutron. And you don't need to put another one arrow here to tell people this is nucleus. Okay, so I hope everyone can see. Yeah? Both answers are acceptable. Depends on which one you like. Depends on which one you like. Okay, guys, let me know in the chat box. Are you guys okay with how to draw modern atomic structure? Are you guys okay with how to draw modern atomic structure? Modern one. Are you okay? Can I? All right. So modern atomic structure is we combine the knowledge we combine the wisdom for all the five scientists and that's how we draw. Okay? Can I? Uh, so remember, nowadays, electron don't draw E anymore. Huh? Don't do that. You only draw E in the old generation, Niels Bohr. But now, don't do that. Now in, the year, now in year 2024, in the latest version, this is the modern world. In the modern world, electron, you use a dot or a cross to represent it. That's all. Okay. okay, one more final summary. So final summary is this, huh? Okay, here we go. Okay, final summary, huh? Okay. So particles. What is particle? Particle is atom, molecule, and ion. Huh? When they say particle, we are referring to atom, molecule, and ion. But when they say subatomic particle, subatomic particle means something inside the atom. So this is atom. Something inside the atom is called subatomic particle. So who is inside our atom? Proton, neutron, electron. Yeah. So we need to know a few things about the proton, the neutron, as well as the electron. So what we need to know. First thing, we need to know the mass for them. Every one proton, the mass is one. All right. So example, today, if you have 70 proton inside, what is the mass? 70, all right? And then there's no unit, huh? there's no unit, not 70 gram, not 70 kilogram, no unit, just call it 70. Why? We will learn this in chapter three. Huh? Chapter three, I will tell you why we don't put the unit for the masses. I will tell you in chapter three, okay? All right, so don't put unit. Huh? So if you have 145, Proton, what is the mass? 145. Understand? Okay, what is the mass of neutron? Neutron, the mass is 1. So, which means proton and neutron, the mass is the same. Yeah, proton and neutron having the same mass. Every one proton, the mass is 1. Every one neutron, the mass is 1 as well. Is okay? All right. Okay, what is the mass of electron? The mass of electron is 1 over 1,836. If you cannot remember this number, you can write zero. Okay, why? Huh? This is a very, very small number. You try to put in your calculator, one divided by 1836. You see, the decimal is super, super small, isn't it? If you try to put this whole thing into the calculator, you'll get a very small decimal, isn't it? 0 0.0005446, something like that. Super, super small. So which means what? Electron is very, very light. Electron super light, la, very, very light, that you can assume, you can assume electron, the mass is zero. You can assume that, yeah? But if you can remember this number, is fantastic. If you cannot, never mind. Just assume it is zero. 
So I want you to know, inside atom, you have proton. Proton, the mass is 1. Inside atom, you have neutron. Neutron, the mass is 1. Inside atom, we have electron. Electron, the mass is 1 over 1,836. Or you can assume electron, the mass is 0. Okay, electron is so light that you can assume that the mass is 0. Okay, that's it. Next one, you must know their relative charge. What is the charge? So the charge for proton is positive 1. So you need to write number 1 here. A lot of people, when the, when the question asks, what is the charge for proton? Many students write positive, no mark, positive 1. Okay, so please be careful. Huh? So if today you have 70, 7, 73 proton, what is the charge? Positive 873. Because every one proton, the charge is positive 1, isn't it? 73 proton, the total charge, positive 73. Same thing, what is the charge for neutron? Neutron is neutral. Neutral. Neutral means no charge, la. zero. Electron, what is the charge? Negative 1. Same thing, you must write number 1 here. If the question asks, what is the charge of electron? You only write negative, no mark. Negative 1. So every one electron, the charge is negative 1. So today, if I got total 30 electron inside there, so the total charge is negative 30. So very easy, isn't it? Okay, last one. Location. Where can you found them? Where you found them? You found proton in the nucleus. Okay? You found neutron also in the nucleus. You found electron outside the nucleus. Okay, Electron is outside the nucleus. And electron not only outside the nucleus, electron is moving in the shell. You see that? You see? That's why electron is outside the nucleus. This is nucleus. Electron is outside the nucleus. And the electron is moving in their own shell. Okay? So I hope everyone is okay with this summary. I hope everyone is okay with the summary. Huh? So most importantly, you really, really need to differentiate particle and subatomic particle. Because guys, I tell you, uh, I tell you, it's so sad, you know, sometimes when you see the question like this, you know, the question asks, what is the subatomic particle? For example, uh, then that fella go to write proton, actually, subatomic particle, then this fella go to write molecule. Well, you're totally wasted one. So, get it, okay? Particle, atom, molecule, ion. Subatomic particle, proton, neutron, electron. I really, really hope you can see the differences. It's not hard, but you all have to be very, very careful. Okay? So let's do a final one-minute summary, what we learned today. Eh? So today, for the first one hour, we do a revision for cooling curve that we learned in the past lesson. We also do quite a number of questions for cooling curve, isn't it? We do some objective question. We do some subjective question for cooling curve. Hopefully, those questions give you all a better idea what is cooling curve all about, how the question, they can test you for the cooling curve. Then after that, we spend about 40 to 45 minutes to learn atomic structure. What is atomic structure? There are five scientists which they tell you what we have inside the atom. Yeah, John Dalton, J.J. Thompson, Ernest Rutherford, Niels Bohr, and James Chadwick. You don't need to memorize their full name. You just memorize a small part of the name, like Thompson will do. You don't need to know J.J. Thompson. The J.J. is not important. You must know it's Thompson only, yeah? So I teach you a simple way to memorize, right? Don't throw rubbish below carpet. Save earth, protect mother nature. That's one of the way to memorize. Lah. So after that, we must know a summary, lah, okay? Uh, where is proton? In the nucleus. Where is neutron? In the nucleus. Where is electron? Outside the nucleus. Electron moving in the shell. You need to know what are the charges for proton, neutron, and electron. You also need to know what is the mass for the proton, neutron, and electron. Okay? Okay, guys. Last question for today. Let me know in the chat box. How's everything? Are you okay with what we covered today? Are you guys okay with what we learned today so far?
So it's not hard, okay? If you really, really learn in a proper way, you should be fine, okay? But I keep emphasize one thing, lo. learning theory is only one part. But what is more important is really doing exercises. Because if we never do exercises, uh, we don't know what is our problem. We don't know how to solve the question. So that is really, really important. Lah. Okay? Okay, so I think that's all for, for today. All right? So I will stop for the lesson now. Okay? And I will see you again in the next lesson. Lah. Yeah?